They are the tiny, fuzzy builders of our world, a creature so small yet so vital that its quiet work shapes the very lands we live in. We often see them buzzing from flower to flower, a familiar sound of summer. But have you ever stopped to truly consider the bee? Look beyond the stripes and the gentle hum. Understand the colossal role it plays in the story of our planet. For centuries, they have been our partner, working tirelessly in the background. Their lives are a complex dance of cooperation, survival, incredible industry, a secret world hidden in plain sight waiting to be discovered. Today, we're going to step inside that world. We'll shrink down and witness the marvel within the hive and across the field. We'll follow these insects on their daily quests from the first light of dawn until the last rays of sun disappear through fragrant meadows, bustling city gardens, ancient woodlands. We'll uncover the secrets of their society, the language they speak, the waggle, the dance, and the incredible engineering of their homes. One out of every three bites of food we eat depends on them. Imagine a world without apples, without almonds, without coffee, without strawberries. That is a world without bees. Their work is a pillar supporting ecosystems and agriculture, a service they provide for free, priceless and irreplaceable. Prepare to be amazed. Forget what you think you know about these striped insects. We're about to peel back the petals and look closer than ever. See how a single colony, a superorganism of thousands, works with one mind, one purpose. Learn about different roles, their short but meaningful lives, the legacy they leave behind. Join us into the secret world of bees, buzzing with life, danger, and wonder. This is their story, and in many ways, our story too. When we think of bees, one sweet golden substance often comes to mind, honey. For thousands of years, humans have sought out this delicious treasure, a natural sweetener created through an incredible process of teamwork and transformation. But honey is just one small chapter in the much larger story of the bee. It is the result of their hard work, a food store to see them through the winter. But their true value to the planet extends far beyond this sticky delight. Their most vital job has nothing to do with what they produce for us. Their real purpose lies in a process called pollination. As a bee travels from one flower to another in search of nectar, tiny grains of pollen stick to its airy body like dust. When it lands on the next flower, some of that pollen rubs off, fertilizing the plant and allowing it to produce seeds, fruit. This simple act is one of the most important natural processes on Earth. It is the engine of biodiversity. Wildflowers that paint our meadows in color rely on bees. The trees that form our forests and provide homes for countless other animals depend on them. They are a keystone species, meaning their presence has a disproportionately large effect on their natural environment relative to their abundance. We are about to explore a society built on self-sacrifice, tireless labor, and an instinct to work for the greater good of the colony. At the very heart of the bustling, humming city that is the hive resides a single, indispensable individual, the queen. She is the mother of all, the life force from which the entire colony springs. Larger than her daughters, the worker bees, and her sons, the drones, her presence dictates the harmony and productivity of the thousands of lives around her. Her one singular purpose is to lay eggs. In the peak of summer, she can lay up to 2,000 eggs in a single day, more than her own body weight. The queen does not rule in the human sense of the word. Instead, her power is chemical. She constantly produces a unique blend of pheromones, a royal scent that flows through the hive. Her life begins differently from her sisters. Chosen larvae are placed in larger, peanut-shaped queen cells. They are fed exclusively on royal jelly. That superfood triggers the transformation into a fertile queen. Once she emerges, her first task is often brutal, to eliminate rivals. She will seek out other queen cells and kill the developing queens within. Shortly after, she takes her one and only mating flight. She flies high and mates with multiple drones from neighboring colonies. She returns home carrying enough sperm to fertilize millions of eggs for years to come. Her life can be up to five years, single-handedly populating her kingdom. The vast majority of the hive's population consists of worker bees. These are sterile females. 
They are the daughters of the queen. They are the true engine of the colony. Their lives are short, often lasting just six weeks in the busy summer months. But they're packed with a remarkable sequence of jobs that change as they age. From the moment she emerges from her cell, she is put to work. As a young bee, her first job is housekeeping. After a few days, she becomes a nurse bee. She tends the developing young and feeds the tiny white larvae bee bread. Around 12 days in, glands on her abdomen produce wax. She becomes a builder, crafting the honeycomb's perfect hexagons. She will also act as an undertaker, removing dead bees to prevent disease. Finally, for the last three weeks, she becomes a forager. She leaves the hive and flies into the wide world. She will fly for miles, navigating by the sun and landmarks, searching for nectar, pollen, water, and propolis. It is dangerous work. She faces predators, bad weather, and exhaustion. Her wings become tattered and torn as she works herself to death for the colony she won't see through winter. While the queen lays the eggs and the workers perform almost every task, there is a third type of bee within the hive, the drone. These are the male bees. These massive eyes are essential for their one and only purpose, to mate with a virgin queen. Drones do no work inside the hive. They don't forage for food, produce wax, or care for the young. They are, in essence, flying reproductive vessels. It's a high-stakes lottery. Only a tiny fraction of drones will ever succeed in mating. The act itself is fatal for the drone. He dies in the process, having fulfilled his biological destiny. Not all bees who stay at the hive are idle, however. As a worker bee enters the final stage of her indoor life, before she becomes a forager, she may serve as a guard. A guard bee will challenge any unfamiliar scent, and if the intruder persists, she will not hesitate to sacrifice her own life to protect her home, using her stinger to repel the threat. The drones, however, have a more tragic end. As autumn approaches and the colony prepares for the scarcity of winter, the drones are no longer welcome. The worker bees will systematically drive them out of the hive, refusing them entry and leaving them to perish in the cold. It may seem harsh, but in the ruthless economy of the hive, every decision is made for the greater good. Long before humans built cities or planted neat rows of crops, Bees thrived in the wild, untamed landscapes of our planet. In a dense woodland, bees find shelter in hollow trees, in fallen logs, or even in cavities underground, protected from the elements and predators. The meadow is a bee's paradise, a veritable banquet of color and scent. It offers a continuous and diverse buffet of nectar and pollen. This diversity is key. A varied diet makes for stronger bees, better able to fight off diseases and parasites. In these wild spaces, bees are a fundamental part of a complex food web. They are not just pollinators, but also a source of food for other creatures. When a forest is cleared or a meadow is plowed under, it's not just the trees or the flowers that are lost. An entire habitat, a complete and functioning ecosystem is destroyed. For the bees that called it home, it is a catastrophe. They lose their shelter and their food source in one fell swoop. Protecting these natural environments is one of the most important things we can do to ensure that bees, in all their wonderful diversity, continue to have a place in our world. You might think of the city as a gray, sterile environment, but look a little closer, and you'll find urban landscapes teeming with life. Bees are surprisingly adept at making a home here, from rooftop gardens, railway embankments, window boxes, and public park. In fact, some studies have shown urban bee colonies can be even healthier and more productive. City bees are resourceful pioneers, finding nesting sites in the most unexpected places. Bumblebees might make a home in a compost bin or underneath a garden shed. Solitary bees will nest in the crumbling mortar of an old brick wall. The human inhabitants of the city play a crucial role the trend towards community garden, allotment plots, and bee-friendly planting schemes has turned many urban areas into year-round buffets for bees. People are becoming more aware, choosing to plant lavender, rosemary, and other nectar-rich herbs and flowers, transforming their small patch of the city into a vital fueling station. However, the city also presents unique challenges. Patches of green space can be few and far between. Pollution can affect their ability to find flowers by scent, and the urban heat island effect can disrupt their natural life cycles. 
The survival of city bees depends on our willingness to share our space, to see our parks and gardens not just as decorations, but as vital ecological corridors. The relationship between bees and agriculture is ancient and deeply symbiotic. For centuries, farms were a patchwork of fields, hedgerows, and orchards, providing a perfect environment for bees to thrive. This partnership is one of the cornerstones of our food system. About 75% of leading food crops depend on animal pollination, and bees are the undisputed champions. Modern agriculture has dramatically changed this landscape. The move to vast monocultures, huge single-crop fields, has created a feast or famine for bees. While the crop is in bloom, there is an overwhelming abundance of food. But once flowering ends, the land becomes a food desert with nothing left to eat. This lack of dietary diversity can weaken colonies. Many large-scale farms now rely on migratory beekeeping to overcome this. Beekeepers load millions of honeybee colonies onto trucks, moving them across the country to pollinate crops. One month, almond groves in California, next, apple orchards in Washington. This practice is vital for food production, but it places immense stress on the bees. A growing movement pushes for more sustainable, bee-friendly farming. Planting wildflower strips along field edges, preserving hedgerows, and reducing chemical pesticide reliance. These tiny, buzzing workers are not just tools to be managed, but a vital part of a healthy farm ecosystem that we must protect. Inside the darkness of the hive, a remarkable conversation is taking place. It's not a language of sound, but one of intricate movement. When a successful forager returns, she performs one of nature's most incredible feats of communication, the waggle dance. This dance is a map, a set of directions to a hidden treasure. The angle of this run in relation to the vertical top of the comb tells the other bees the direction of the food source relative to the sun. If she runs straight up, it means fly directly towards the sun. If she runs straight down, it means fly directly away from it. The bees also need to know how far to travel. This information is communicated through the duration of the waggle run. A very short run might tell her sisters that the flowers are only a few hundred meters away. A much longer, more sustained waggle run indicates a food source that could be several kilometers from the hive. This dance is more than just a map. It's a democratic process. The more enthusiastic and longer the dance, the more recruits it will attract. In this way, the colony collectively decides to allocate its workforce to the most profitable flower patches available. While the waggle dance is the most famous form of bee communication, it is only one part of a much richer multi-sensory language. The hive is filled with a complex symphony of chemical signals, pheromones. When a guard bee stings an intruder, she releases an alarm pheromone, a banana-like smell that instantly alerts her sisters and calls them to a coordinated defense. A bee that finds rich flowers can release pheromone from the nasonoc gland, which guides others to the exact location. Bees also produce a sound called piping. A newly emerged queen will pipe to announce herself. Other virgin queens may pipe back, a conversation that often leads to a deadly fight for supremacy. This web of communication underpins every aspect of their social life. It lets tens of thousands act as one superorganism. It turns a group of insects into a humming, buzzing metropolis built on perfect communication. When we picture a bee, it's most likely the familiar striped honeybee. Then, of course, we have their larger, fuzzier cousins, the bumblebees. Their dense, hairy coats provide excellent insulation, letting them be active on days when honeybees would be huddled inside their hive. Bumblebees possess a secret weapon called buzz pollination. A bumblebee can grab onto the flower and vibrate its powerful flight muscles that literally shakes the pollen loose. This makes them uniquely effective pollinators for many important crops that honeybees just can't pollinate. While honeybees and bumblebees steal the spotlight, they actually represent only a tiny fraction of the world's bee diversity. An astonishing 90% of all bee species are actually solitary. This means they don't live in large colonies. Instead, each female is her own queen. She builds her own nest, gathers her own food, and lays her own eggs without any help from others. The leafcutter bee, as her name suggests, meticulously snips perfect circles from leaves 
which she uses to line her nest cells. To defend, solitary bees are generally non-aggressive and very gentle. Providing a bee hotel can give these fascinating creatures a safe place to raise their young. Their diversity is their strength, and it's this huge variety of solitary bees that provides resilience to our ecosystems. A vital part of the rich tapestry of life that keeps our natural world buzzing. Despite their incredible resilience and adaptability, bees today face an unprecedented array of threats, a perfect storm of challenges that is pushing many species to the brink. Perhaps the most significant threat is the loss and fragmentation of their natural habitat, leaving them stranded and starving in a barren landscape. When bees are forced to rely on a single food source, they become malnourished and weak, much like a person eating nothing but potatoes. Compounding this problem is the widespread use of chemical pesticides. Systemic pesticides are absorbed by the plant and are present in every part of it, including the pollen and nectar. Even at sublethal doses, these neurotoxins can impair their ability to navigate, forage, and communicate, effectively leaving them lost and confused. Bees are now facing the profound and unpredictable challenge of a rapidly changing climate. Warmer springs can cause plants to flower earlier than usual, before bee colonies have had a chance to build up their numbers. Extreme weather events also pose a direct threat. Prolonged droughts can cause flowers to wither. Unusually wet and windy weather can prevent bees from leaving the hive. As if these environmental pressures weren't enough, bees are also under attack from diseases and parasites. The Varroa destructor mite is a particularly devastating parasite of the honeybee. The arrival of invasive predators can wreak havoc. The Asian hornet is a voracious predator of honeybees. They hover at hive entrances, picking off foraging bees one by one and can destroy an entire colony in hours. Imagine a world without them. Our supermarket shelves would look starkly different. The vibrant colors of the fruit and vegetable aisle would be replaced by a monotonous bay. The simple pleasure of an apple, a handful of strawberries or a morning coffee would become an unaffordable luxury for many people. Our countryside would lose its soul. The wildflower meadows that are the jewels of our landscape would fade away. The birds and small mammals that feed on the fruits and seeds produced by pollinated plants would struggle to survive, leading to a cascade of extinctions. The gentle hum of a summer's day would be replaced by an unsettling silence. It would be a poorer world in every sense of the word. But the story is not over yet. The power to change this narrative lies with every single one of us. The solutions can start small, in our own back gardens, on our balconies, and in the choices we make every day. Now, we must take the next step action. We must become not just admirers of bees, but their active guardians, their champions, and their friends. The most important thing you can do is to provide food. Plant a variety of flowers that will bloom at different times, from early spring to late autumn. It doesn't have to be neat and tidy, in fact, Bees love a bit of wildness. Let a patch of your lawn grow long and see what wildflowers pop up. Next, provide a safe place for them to live. You can buy or easily make a bee hotel from hollow bamboo canes or drilled blocks of wood. And crucially, avoid using pesticides and herbicides in your garden. A healthy garden full of natural predators like ladybirds will keep pests in check without harming our buzzing friends. Beyond our own gardens, we can make a difference with our wallets. Support local beekeepers by buying their honey. Choose organic produce when you can. Use your voice, too. Encourage your local council to manage public parks and verges in a more bee-friendly way, letting wildflowers grow and cutting less often. The secret world of bees is a world worth saving. They are a barometer for the health of our planet. If they are thriving, it is a sign that our ecosystems are healthy and in balance. So the next time you see a bee, don't just see a bug. See a partner, a worker, a vital piece of the puzzle. See a friend and do one small thing to help it on its way.